pretty clean, Ivy. Sam! Sam! There's something. There's something down at the riverbank. Now, now, don't start that again, Ivy. You've been skittish ever since we decided to shortcut through this timber. It wasn't my imagination, Sam. There's something down there, I tell you. All right. What did it look like? I don't know. I couldn't see it. But I could hear it. And a, a bush moved. Just a deer, more than like. <laughs> a deer never spooked horses like that. Yeah. What do you think it is, Sam? How do I know? The story you are about to see was taken from actual recorded history of the Oklahoma Territory in the 1800s. My time between my ranch and the office of mayor in Cimarron City is not always easy, particularly when I'd rather just be a rancher. My name is Matt Rockford. I just managed to slip away from my office when two of my right-hand men, Jess Williams and Tiny Buttinger, showed up to tell me they'd found a dead steer. Now, there wasn't anything particularly unusual about that, but... See, Mr. Rockford said his head bashed in. I suppose a horse could have kicked him. That still wouldn't account for that hind quarter missing. Yeah, that had to be a knife that done that. And I don't know no animal that can use a knife. Well, those big Africa apes can hold a knife. Got a hand like a human being. Yeah, but we ain't in Africa, though, though. Well, maybe one of them could escape from a traveling carnival, maybe. Jess, apes aren't carnivorous. There, you see, little fella. Besides, I read someplace where they don't eat meat, neither. No, I reckon an engine's about the only human that can get up close enough to a range steer to hit him in the head. Tiny, there ain't an Indian around here to kill one of Mr. Rock's cattle. Way he's always giving them beef whenever they're in need of it. Well, there just might be one that ain't heard of that. Even so, there ain't an Indian alive that'd leave this much beef to go to waste. And I know that for a fact. What do you think about it, Mr. Rockford? Well, now, I think you boys just like to argue. Hey, look. That's a woman. For once, I gotta agree with you, little fella. Her husband disappeared, you say? He sure did, Dodie. No tell how far she'd been walking before we found her. All on foot, too. Poor woman. Almost scared to death when she opened her eyes. Well, the first thing she's seen is your face. Now, just what do you mean by that? Maybe she thought she was looking at the beast. Now, wait a minute, you fellas. I ain't no dude, but I sure ain't no beast, neither. 
No, I didn't mean you, Tiny. I meant the beast of the Cimarron. Oh, that's different. Now, just who might that be? That beast fella? Oh, it's just an old wives' tale about some big beast that roams around along the river, capturing people. An uh, animal beast? Don't you go believe in that hogwash, Tiny. It's just a fool story that got started because folks couldn't figure any other reason for people disappearing in the woods. Well, why did they disappear? How do I know? Well, how do you know it ain't true, then? Some folks claim they've seen big monsters' foot tracks a time or two. Yeah? Then how do you know that Miss Hargrave's husband wasn't packed off by that beast fella? Because there ain't no such thing, that's why. I guess. Would you open the door for me, please? Sure will, Miss Beth. Be pleased to, Miss Purcell. Excuse me, little fella, but the lady asked me to open the door for her. That's not true, Tiny. She was looking right at me when she said it. Now, it ain't polite to argue Thank while the lady's waiting. And some folks claim that down on the Cedar Canyon country, they found the cave where this beast lived once. And it was full of bones and skulls in the lap. You're lucky that Matt found you. I don't know how long she could have lasted without food and water. She'll be all right now, though. A bit of good cooking, some rest. I'll see to that, Doctor. Mrs. Hargrave, couldn't you give us just some idea where your camp was located? Well, I might, if I could go back there. But to tell you where, <laughs> I wandered around so long, I got all mixed up. Now, don't anybody get any ideas about taking her back to the timber country just yet? But my husband, you, you can't find him without my help. Now, Mrs. Hargrave, we'll all do what we can to help. But you've got to get well first. We'll see you later, Mrs. Hargrave. Thank you. Bye. Matt? I think you ought to know her husband's going to be hard to find. The trail's got to be cold by now. But in a week old, I'd say. A week? Well, from her condition, I'd say she'd been wandering around at least a week. She just lost track of the time. And there's no use discouraging her about her husband's chances of being found. Well, I'd still like to take her back there with us, Doc. Whenever you say it's all right. It sure is strange the way she says her husband disappeared. Dodie here thought the beast of the Cimarron might have had something to do with it. <laughs> Dodie, that's just a superstitious legend. One of those wild stories that got wilder every time it was retold. Besides, all the beast stories I ever heard were from way up the Cimarron. Nowhere around here. Isn't that right, Miss Brock? Well, now, I don't know, Jess. You'd... I think you'd better ask Lane here. The sheriff's office usually gets notified on people missing. You know, come to think of it, there was an Overland stage report that came through on a lost passenger not more than a year ago. A fella traveling from the east. The stage made a rest stop on the edge of the timber. He got out and took his dog for a walk and was never seen again, man or dog. That wasn't more than 35 miles from here. Well, you worry about your beast of the Cimarron. I've got a patient inside to worry about. The boys will help you move her over to the best place if you like, Doc. Thanks. Right this way, boy. Lane, go through the sheriff's files. Dig out all the old records on missing persons you can find and bring them over to my office. Sure, Matt. Oh, wait. Does this mean that you think there might be something to this beast story? I don't know. I lost a steer today. He was killed by a blow on the head and one of his hindquarters missing. What does that mean? Well, for 20 years, members of the Livestock Association have been reporting isolated cases of steers killed exactly the same way and always near where somebody had just mysteriously disappeared, in the wooded area near the river.
there is a definite pattern. Lane, I remember my father telling me a story about a, about a boy who was burned in the fire that, that killed his parents. Yeah, the Dunlap boy, uh, yeah, Perry that's, Dunlap. That's right. He lived in a little settlement up in the Cedar Canyon area. I remember uh, he was last seen going into the gorge with his dog. I don't think anyone has seen or heard of him since. But later somebody found the dog's body with a bullet in it, but never a trace of him. That's right. Now my point is, Lane, that the first stories of the beast started up there in the Cedar Canyon area. Now besides the Dunlap boy, there were several hunters and, and settlers who disappeared right about there. But later stories, and these records show that as the years went by, the disappearances took place further and further down from that point. Now, the abandoned cave with the remains of the three hunters was found almost 20 miles below Cedar Canyon. And the settler and his wagon and dead horses were found even farther down the river. Now, the circuit riding preacher and his camp and belongings were found almost 10 miles below that point. But his horse showed up almost 20 miles further down the river. The fellow who took his dog for a walk last year. He disappeared even closer to Cimarron City. You're right, Matt. There sure is a pattern. Do you think there's a chance it might just be renegade Indians doing this? Well, there's always a chance, Lane. But the tribes themselves were scared out of the timber area when they heard the stories. Now, if it was one of them, I'm, I'm sure they would have known about it. Well, that's right, too. But there's one thing we can be sure of. Mr. Hargrave's disappearance in my dead steer proves this. Whoever it is, or whatever it is, it's now operating in our own backyard. Matt! Yes, what is it, Silas? There's a rumor traveling around like wildfire that's likely to get out of hand. I figured the quickest way to stop it was to come straight to you. It ain't a rumor, Silas. My boys don't make up stories out of their own heads. They heard Mr. Rockford himself telling Doc Hodges that the Beast of the Cimarron was here, right close to town. Now, are you going to deny that, Mr. Rockford? Well, now, let's not get panicky about this. It's... Yeah, Mr. Rockford, you know my boys well. Yes, I know them quite well. I won't have people thinking the story, tell us, like Silas says. Why, I never... Uh, uh... You did say it, didn't you? Well, now, I, I might have suggested that something like that wasn't impossible. There, Silas. Now, what do you got to say? Well, I say if it is true, we darn well ought to do something about it. Well, I should say so. All right, all right, now, let's not get carried away. Just because there's something going on here that, that we don't quite understand. We understand enough, Mr. Rockford. That poor woman you brought in here lost her husband out there, and that's enough to tell me that everybody in Cimarron City is in danger. What's to stop that beast from coming right into town? It won't be safe on the streets after dark, while a monster like that would even prey on folks in the sleeping in the beds. Yeah. Now, will you please stop getting yourselves all worked up? You got to do something about it, Mr. Rockford. It's up to you and Mr. Temple here to protect us from such a thing. We know our responsibility. I hope you all know yours. What do you mean by that? We'll need about a dozen men to go into the timber with us. I'm sure we won't have any trouble finding them amongst you. Well, uh, we hadn't figured on. Uh, that is, well, we don't know anything about this beast. That's just the point, Ed. Nobody knows what we're up against. But if you and the others let your imaginations run wild, we'll have a panic on our hands that'll do more damage than a hundred so-called beasts. That's right, folks. Beast is just a word that folks use to make the story sound better. So why don't you all go home quietly and let us take care of it, huh? That's the thing to do, folks. I'm sure that none of us need worry with Matt and Lane handling it. However, if any of you insist upon worrying, I'm having a special sale on down at the store on firearms and ammunition. I've got everything reduced to 90 cents on the dollar. And if you ain't got the ready cash, well, I'll write it down. <laughs> yes, sir. We're going to have that sale going full force for a long time. You can always count on Silas. He never misses a good bet. And I'll bet he never thought of reducing those prices until about a minute ago. <laughs> That'd be like betting he isn't the shrewdest businessman in town. Hey, that was quite a speech you made, Lane. You almost had me convinced that the beast is nothing more than an old wives' tale. I wish I had myself convinced. Everything's ready, Matt. Fine.
Matt. I want you to know I've advised Mrs. Hardgrave. She's not ready to make a trip like this. One night's rest. It just isn't enough. Doc, don't you go to worry. Look, the boys got it fixed up in there real nice and comfortable for her. We're not going to let her overdo it. I'll make sure you don't. Beth, you see she gets plenty of hot food and lots of rest. Now, doctor, don't you worry yourself sick about your patient. I'll take care of her. Jess, Tiny, let's go. We're ready, Mr. Rockford. Oh. Goodbye. Hold up, Tiny. Any of the country beginning to look familiar, Mrs. Hargrave? Well, I think so, but I'm not sure. If you could just get a little closer to the river, I think I could find it then. That's where we were camped, not far from the riverbank. Tiny, this is where we leave the trail. Drive in closer to the river. I'd like to try to find that camp before dark. Oh! Hold up, Tiny. Hold it, Lane. They must be Hargrave's horses. Let's get them. It's our team, all right, Mr. Rockford. And I can tell you something else. When the horses got over their fright, they must have come back to our camp and waited. Then your camp is near here. Right up ahead, no more than 50 yards. What do you think? Is that thing or not? Men, don't tramp around here any more than necessary. If there are any tracks, I don't want to cover them up. Lane? I guess you can start setting up camp now. I don't think we'd better trust a picket line for the horses, though, do you, Matt? You know, if they get spooked like Mrs. Hargrave's horses, we'll all be walking into town. Men, no picket line. Tie your horses to wagons and stout trees and tie them short. Lay and see that nobody wanders off alone, either. Beth, I'm scared. Oh, there's nothing to be worried about this time, Ivy. With all these men, we're protected. I know that, but it's actually being here to look for my husband and knowing the time has drawn close when I'll know the truth. It scares me. Hope the trip wasn't too tiring for you, Mrs. Hargrave. Oh, I'm all right, Mr. Rockford. And I'm ready to show you where I found my husband's rifle. All right. It was over here where the horses were tied. Jess, Tiny, get your rifles and follow us. Sure wish it wasn't getting dark so fast. Yeah. They ain't gonna make tracking that beast fella no easier. Maybe Mr. Rock will decide to wait till morning. Now, you ain't getting scared, are you, little fella? Me? Scared? I ain't scared of no animal. Yeah, but what if it ain't no animal? What if it ain't like nothing you've ever seen before? Hmm. Jesse. Tiny, over here. Come in, Mr. Rockford. He stopped here to quiet the horses, and then he went in there, and that's where I found the rifle. I left it there. Mrs. Hargrave, it won't be necessary for you to go any further. Jess. Yes? Stay here with the women. Yes, sir. Tiny, follow me. See anything, Mr. Rockford? Yeah, you. Not too dark. Sometimes when folks get upset and scared about something, they, they don't remember things too well. Looks like that Miss Hargrave told her story pretty straight, don't it? Yeah, that's right. One thing about it, though. If that beast fella was a man, it appears to me he wouldn't have left that rifle there. Beast ways he could have used the bullets. Yeah, you'd think so. See what else we can find. 
what's taking them so long. Don't worry, Ivy. They're just looking for tracks. Yeah, but tracks of what? Vicious beast. It's Mr. Hargrave, ain't it? Yeah. Sam's rifle. Went through Hargrave's wagon. Doesn't look to me like anything's been disturbed. Water, food supply, nothing's been touched. Maybe the beast has moved on. Maybe, but if he hasn't, he sure knows we're here. We'll post some sentries for the night, and we'll see what we can find come daylight. It'll be kind of chilly and damp. Fog's coming in from the river. I'll see that a big fire's kept going all night. Mr. Rockford, Jess and me will be happy to stand the first watch if you like. Good. Pick a spot near the horses. They'll be your alarm. Alarm? If they hear any noise, they'll know it first. Then you can be ready. Now, what'd you have to go and volunteer for? Now, you ain't getting scared again, are you, little feller? I told you I ain't scared. I just don't see why you have to be so all fired brave with my life. What did this? It's a big monster, Mr. Rock. Stood up straight, seven or eight feet tall. I saw it running off into the brush. No, it weren't standing up straight, little feller. You were right the first time when you said it's an animal. It's big, all right. But he took off in here on four legs. Man, man, over here, it's Tony. He just knocked down. Get him over near the fire. Have best take a look at him. And you two men stay with the women. Don't let them out of your sight. 